Bonjour, welcome to, um, welcome to, who, 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 who am I kidding? Um, welcome to myself watching my video diaries. Uh, this is video diary number five, six. And it's probably gonna be a very quick one because um, I only finished up on the bonfire last Wednesday. And so I was only in the workshop Thursday, Friday. Friday was my birthday. And I may or may not have gone surfing in the afternoon. And so it is sort of just a very quick recap on, I guess, what I managed to get done in this uh, those last two day and a half um, in the workshop last week, um, which essentially was getting the head back into the project and finishing up the Standing Dead um, working title sculptures that I've been doing that are over here you actually get to leave the the plinth have a look so they are sorry there and I think I'm pretty happy with how they're looking this is really hard to film because it's on the selfie camera but yeah um, so I finished up them, I think there was three that had been scorched, but not routed or planed back flat or sanded or finished, blah, blah, blah. So I did that, which was really good. Um, yeah. And then, oh, that was mostly Thursday's work. And then on Friday, uh, which is my birthday, 28, late twenties. Um, I went to Sussex Timber Company again with Lay and picked up some green ash butts for to go to Forest and Found with on Monday, which is really, really fucking exciting. I feel very, very grateful to be able to go and do it. It's just like amazing that I get to go and take some of my work there for them to hopefully give me some feedback on and to teach me how to do some bowl turning or cup turning, which according to Oliver Rackham was one of the first things made in ash with disposable cups. And so he, he provided in the book where he was mentioning the, the cup making thing, um, a little diagram of how they would split out the greenwood to make the cups. And so they basically cut it into, they basically split the log into quarters, which is exactly what I've done. Um, and so I got a bit chopped at 800 mil, a bit chopped at 500 mil and a bit chopped at 400 mil roughly, um, which is really good. I think there's a, that um, YouTuber that I've been watching, Peter Follansby, who does a lot of green woodworking and he was like processing his green stuff at the mill or like, you know, quarter splitting it. <clears throat> I don't know if that's like the actual word that, that, or like the phrase that used to describe it, but it made so much sense because they were just so heavy to lug around these massive meter tool butts. And I think that's actually, they were super lovely at Sussex Timber Company again. I really, really love it there. And because it all gets processed for firewood, it's not even like any of it's getting milled. He said, apart from the occasional really special looking bit. And so it feels like a, the right place to be for it. And they were just great there, basically. So, yeah, I think in the future, it's kind of easy with the cupping stuff because you know that the stuff that you're gonna be making is really small. And so you can get them to chop it at like cross cuts along the log, quite small. And then you know that you're going to be splitting it into quarters and so everything becomes really manageable. It's like almost like firewood size bits. Um, so yeah, that is cool. It makes it it's a slightly different story if I'm doing the standing dead stuff because I take out the center of it and I split a square out around the pith. And so it is, it would be slightly more of a process to, to process it on site. But I still think if I can persuade them to do it, that would be a really brilliant thing just to shave loads of weight off at the mill. And then I could like leave it there as firewood or take it home as firewood to dry. Um, 
but it basically saves loads of loads of mess in the workshop everyone complaining in the workshop building about me hammering the whole time nice time outdoors um and my back just lugging those massive bits of timber and the idea that you could basically just get them to put it somewhere with a tractor and then start splitting it there until it's like a manageable size for you to move i mean i don't think that i'm not ever going to make anyone that's so tall that i can't lift it i imagine you know so that felt really good to be doing that and to sort of i guess that's kind of like that's a part, one of those parts of the process that maybe i wouldn't figure it out if i hadn't had the time to to do that i mean maybe it's super obvious but it's just really cool to be able to go into that mode where it's like okay now this is the most efficient way of doing it as opposed to just like um I'm doing this because it's like a rush and okay just take the wood away and then I'll just do it in the workshop it feels nice to be doing it in a way that feels like right and efficient and stuff like that so yeah I think that is basically what I did last week and then I changed over the bulbs to LED bulbs and it's taken away some of the nice orange glow of the workshop but it is much brighter um and then I went surfing with Benji yesterday afternoon so I'm doing a bit today on Saturday um but yeah i think that next week with forest and found maybe i'm just going to use this video the next sort of five minutes just to sort of think about the sort of things that i want to get from going to see them and what i want to take i think definitely in terms of tools like the turning stuff is basically the turning and the greenwood processing stuff I think will be the most useful because they've got some machinery there and maybe some chisels but maybe not even um so yeah and Yain gave me such an adorable birthday present of his lovely 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 bowl gouge lathe tool and so i'm gonna sharpen that up and take that with me which it's very touched by um and I want to update the sketchbook before I go, and so I've got everything. There was some stuff about the green woodworking processing and, uh, or green wood processing and some process stuff from the Standing Dead that I want to get in the sketchbook before I take down there. Um, yes, so I'm definitely gonna take the Standing Dead sculptures because I think it's good to see that, good for them to see that I can show a finished thing. <laughs> as opposed to just loads of bits, basically half done bits. Um, I mean, room in the car is difficult because I've got loads of bits of green wood in there as well. But I would also, I wonder if I can flip the camera. No. Um, but there's also here, I've got the stuff that I've milled into slabs that sort of might be interesting to ask them about, but there's just a lot of stuff there to take. Over here, there's just some sort of bits, but I don't think I can take them, stuff that I was doing for um, pounded ash baskets stuff. And then here and here, I've got the super cankered stuff that I got from Pete's yard that I don't want to do with the standing dead, but might be good to talk to them about because Yes, I'm going to take them. I've decided right here that I'm going to take them because I think they are really good to take because because with these, I didn't want to do the same stuff as the Standing Dead because it just didn't make sense because on the Standing Dead, I think the point is that it's kind of clean timber and I'm routing out these knots as a point of entry for the disease. But on these, I mean if I routed that into a circle, it would become much less interesting as a thing. And so I think I will take these two as questions to ask about it. And you can see here, I've got this drawing on this piece of wood, which is very useful because I forgot during the bonfire, which went very well, um, apart from the thing being blown down. Uh, I've got this sort of stepped thing. And so it'd be good to take that and show them. And then with this bit of a question mark with this piece of wood, but I think, That'd be a great question what to take to them. Um, I'm gonna take these little samples here 
And I'm going to try not to forget this one as well. Difficult to know about this cankered stuff. I think it's too big to take. And I think if I'm taking those two, then I don't have to. So yeah, maybe that, maybe I'll wrap it up there because there's not a hell of a lot to talk about today. Um, but I think there will be next week, which is very exciting. Looking really, really looking forward to having a good five day week on it, um, on the project and to go down to Somerset and learn how to do some bowl turning. I think that should be amazing. And next week, I think I'm going to need to do a bit of time calculation, calendar understanding, because I'm definitely feeling a bit out of touch with the sort of whole process of where I am in the project and stuff like that. So it'd be really good to get a handle on that. But all in all, I feel like I have jumped back into the project in really good time. I was worried that after the bonfire and my birthday that I'd just be like, oh, what the fuck's going on? But I feel back into it. And I'm reading, um, to, oh, I fucking can't remember what the book is called. The Man Who Made Things With Trees, which looks shit on the outside, but started reading it. There's actually loads of great info in there and it feels good to get my intellectual brain switched on to uh, the project again. So yeah, I will catch up. Oh yeah, and I can take the ebonizing stuff because I think that is a really interesting part of the process to show them. So yeah, nice one.